At midnight Eastern time tomorrow, the US government will run out of money to fund itself unless Congress can agree a last minute deal. If the story sounds familiar to you, well, it is. It would be the 22nd time in the last 50 years that the US government services have had to be shut down because of a budget deadlock in Congress. Now, the last time in early 2019 saw a month of widespread disruption to the world's largest economy. Erin Delmore reports from New York. The clock is ticking on Capitol Hill. The Democrat-led Senate and the Republican-led House will need to agree on a deal to fund the federal government past September 30th. Right now, the Senate has bipartisan support on a stopgap bill that would extend funding until November 17th, but House Republicans have rejected it. They're fighting over government spending levels, with hardline conservatives calling for deeper cuts and tying any government funding bill to the ongoing issue of immigration and security at the U.S.'s southern border. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has a handful of holdouts in his Republican caucus who have said they'll oppose any short-term funding bill. Several are threatening to oust McCarthy from his post if he doesn't meet their demands. Any shutdown would impact hundreds of thousands of federal workers, many of whom would be out of work without pay. And relatedly, Americans who rely on federal assistance would see services slow or stop. That means nutrition benefits lapsed, civil trials postponed, museums closed, inspections for hazardous drinking water stopped, clinical trials for new medical treatments delayed. The U.S. government has shut down, at least partially, three times in the past decade. And credit agencies have taken notice, with some downgrading the U.S.'s credit rating already. Well, in the last couple of hours, the Republican-led held House of Representatives has passed a series of partisan funding bills, including one for the Department of Defense, which removes funding for Ukraine. But they have little or no chance of getting past the Democrat-held Senate. So a shutdown is looking increasingly more likely. Let's speak now to the former Labour Secretary under President Bill Clinton and now Professor of Economics at Berkeley, Robert Reich. Welcome to the programme. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, can we start just by reminding us the impact of the 2018-2019 shutdown, which lasted for around 35 days? Uh, well, it cost uh, American taxpayers and the American economy anywhere from 11 to $15 billion. Uh, and it put a lot of people uh, out of work temporarily. Uh, paychecks were not delivered, even to members of the armed forces. Uh, it disrupted a lot of people's lives. When these things happen, and I have personally been involved in two shutdowns over the last 30 years, uh, there is a great deal of uh, human suffering that is unnecessary. It's embarrassing when these things happen. It's embarrassing to talk to you all in the UK about it, because uh, this is not the way to run a government. And also, we'll be looking at the credit rating, won't we, and the GDP of the country. How, how are they likely to be affected if this turns into a shutdown and it, and it runs for a long time? If it runs for a long time, the credit rating of the United States could be downgraded. Now, do you remember in the fight over lifting the so-called debt limit, uh, there was already a downgrade of the credit of the United States. Uh, this can be expected to happen once again. Now, you're both a professor of economics and a politician. What are the politicians arguing about? Well, the politicians basically are saying uh, on the Trump side of the Republican Party uh, that we all need to have some excuse. And that's what, really what they are arguing about. We need an excuse to shut the government down. Uh, Donald Trump, behind the scenes, is telling his radical Republicans uh, that, in fact, chaos uh, would not necessarily be a bad thing. Uh, most Republicans in the House do not favor this particular position. But the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, has put himself in a very difficult position because any member of the Republican caucus could vote for him to be basically sacked as Speaker. Uh, so the radical fringe has a great deal of leverage over him. That's what's really going on right now. Now, that's the internal politics. But if we if we step back, there are wider economic troubles plus U.S. auto plant strikes. So this really wouldn't be ideal time for a shutdown at all, would it? This is a very bad time for a shutdown. Now, the Federal Reserve Board is doing a good job reducing inflation. 
At the same time, the Biden administration has been doing a very good job investing in long-term infrastructure and semiconductor manufacturing and a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, so you've got a lot of parts of the government that are doing what they should be doing, but you've got these radicals in the House of Representatives who are doing exactly the opposite. All right, Robert Reich, let me put you on the spot with the final question. Part one, is this going to happen? What's your prediction? And part two, if you were doing this, you've done this twice before, how would you avoid one? Uh, well, is it going to happen? I would have said up until today, no, there would be a continuing resolution that is a way of, of getting through this, at least temporarily kicking the can down the road. Uh, but the Republican House is intransigent, and I'm losing hope that we're going to get out of this without a shutdown. Uh, now, how do we avoid this in the future? There is no magical way. The American voters have simply got to do what they've done before, and that is say to the party that is responsible for the shutdown, we are voting you out. Uh, that has happened before. Newt Gingrich in 1995, 1996 tried this and the Republicans suffered. Well, they did not obviously learn their lesson. All right, Robert Reich, who is losing hope on that one. Thank you for joining us here on BBC News.